Here is my open letter to our legislators, judges, and lawmen pertaining to the potential enactment of the red flag gun confiscation law, SB Senate Bill 7, that is now being discussed in Washington, D.C. An open letter to our legislators, judges, and lawmen. Senator Lindsey Graham has announced that the Senate Judiciary Committee soon will be conducting hearings on Senator Marco Rubio's Senate Bill 7, the Extreme Risk Protection Order and Violence Prevention Act of 2019, otherwise known as the National Red Flag Gun Confiscation Bill. I know I'm speaking for tens of thousands of my fellow Montanans and tens of millions of my fellow Americans when I say what I'm about to say. Red flag gun confiscation laws violate every principle of liberty upon which our country was founded. There is no due process associated with red flag laws. A judge's order to seize the firearms from an American citizen who has not been accused of a crime, charged with a crime, convicted of a crime, or who never even threatened to commit a crime based on the accusation of a single individual is anything but due process. Our accuser could be a disgruntled employee, a bitter ex-spouse or relative, a vengeful neighbor, an anti-gun liberal, or even an anti-gun policeman. By definition, red flag laws use mere suspicion of what one might do as justification to seize a person's firearms. Tactics such as these have been used in virtually every despotic regime of history. In the name of protecting society, the rights and liberties of individuals were denied. Eventually, the, these repressive governments included political or religious persuasion as triggering red flags, which led to their disarmament, all in the name of public safety, of course. You know as well as I do that when the rights of one American are abridged, the rights of all Americans are abridged. This is not yet a communist nation where the rights of the state or even the rights of a majority of citizens supersede the rights of the individual. Furthermore, it is a fallacy to suggest that a mental health diagnosis by itself indicates that someone is automatically a threat to himself or others. Dr. Ann Bukacek, a highly respected medical doctor in the community in which I live, recently wrote, quote, mental health diagnosis given by physician or other mental health care workers do not predict firearm violence. As a physician for over 30 years who has treated many patients with mental health diagnosis and some autistic spectrum patients, I have not had one of those patients commit an act of gun violence. I did have a patient who bludgeoned a man to death with a blunt object, and that patient carried no mental health diagnosis. Psychopaths with no conscience, especially the more intelligent ones, usually escape detection and or a particular diagnosis, close quote. This doctor's examination of the issue reflects reality. Besides, under these red flag laws, exactly who is it that determines that someone is crazy? Is it one judge who bases his or her conclusion on the accusations of just one individual? Is it up to politicians or government bureaucrats to define who is and who is not crazy? There are some people who believe that anyone who would even own a firearm is crazy. Others believe one's political or religious beliefs qualify him as crazy. Heck, we've all read the documentation of various governments, local, state, and federal, that have assigned all kinds of crazy, even dangerous definitions against people based on their interpretation of Bible prophecy or their association with political candidates such as Congressman Ron Paul or their opposition to politically correct ideologies, etc., does the judge who issues a warrant to seize a person's firearms under a red flag law provide the accused with an opportunity to defend himself before violating his constitutional and natural rights? No. Does the judge provide an opportunity for a close examination of the accusations against the accused, including investigating the accuser? 
before violating his constitutional and natural rights? No. Does the judge allow the accused to face his accuser before violating his constitutional and natural rights? No. Red flag laws turn the Bill of Rights and the fundamental legal doctrine that a man is innocent until proven guilty completely upside down. Red flag laws are a mockery to every constitutional principle of liberty since the Magna Carta. Seizing a, seizing a citizen's firearms by force and thereby rendering him defenseless without a crime being committed or even the accusation of a crime being made is old-fashioned tyranny. Such a act presumes a person guilty until proven innocent. Then there is this. After the guns are seized, it could take years for the victim to prove his innocence or competence and have his guns returned. And in what condition would they be when and if returned? Furthermore, will you legislators, judges, and police officers who collaborate to strip an innocent person's ability to defend himself accept any responsibility when the real bad guys take advantage of this person's vulnerability and invade his home and bludgeon or rape or even kill his family? Of course you won't, but mark it down. You will be held accountable and responsible in the eyes of Almighty God and in the eyes of the citizens you have victimized. And are you really going to try and tell us that police officers are more competent and mentally stable than the rest of us? Are you kidding me? The examples of improper, unsafe, careless, and even homicidal acts of cops with guns are ubiquitous. It was an FBI agent who was armed at a nightclub in Denver and then started gyrating and dancing like a madman until his handgun fell on the floor, discharged, and wounded a fellow patron. But no official even questioned this officer's fitness to possess a firearm even after that event took place. Then there's the case of the Dallas police officer who walked into the wrong apartment and shot and killed the man who lived inside. Where was the red flag regarding this officer? And what about the two police officers in St. Louis who used a revolver to play Russian roulette and one of the two wound up shooting and killing the other one? Why wasn't a red flag raised about these nincompoops? These stories could go on forever. Where are the red flag laws for the policemen and sheriff's deputies in this country? The only difference between them and the rest of us who are being victimized by these draconian red flag laws is that they wear badges and we do not. And the other difference is the vast majority of private citizens who carry firearms are not nearly as stupid and incompetent as the policemen mentioned above. So much for equal justice under the law. It has taken many of us a lifetime of hard work and labor to be able to obtain our gun collections. We have successfully passed FBI background checks, local and state requirements and obligations for responsible gun ownership, yet our guns are gonna be confiscated overnight by the word of someone, an anonymous someone at that, who claims we might be unsuitable to own a gun. Again, such an act turns American history and our Bill of Rights upside down. Chris Kobach, is a former Secretary of State of Kansas. He's a former professor of constitutional law at UMKC School of Law. He wrote an excellent analysis of the constitutional violations of these red flag laws, and I quote, number one, the seizure of guns without any hearing at all. The laws all contain an ex parte provision that allows the state to temporarily seize a person's guns without even notifying the gun owner or giving him a chance to be heard. This is the quintessential denying of due process. The Fourth Amendment makes clear that a person cannot be denied liberty to exercise one's constitutional right to keep and bear arms without due process of law. This confiscation is temporary but it can easily lead to long-term or permanent confiscation. Number two, based on the testimony of one unrelated person, the confiscation order can be based on the testimony of only one person claiming that the gun owner possess, poses a risk to the safety of himself or others. The law, proposed in Kansas, 
deceptively says that it has to be the testimony of a family member. But family member is defined to include former dating partners and anyone who has ever lived with the defendant. So a jilted former boyfriend or girlfriend or even a roommate from years ago could easily set in motion the disarming of a lawful gun owner. Number three, using a very low standard of proof. The standard for obtaining an ex parte order against a gun owner is absurdly low. One only need to show, quote, reasonable cause to believe that the person may pose a risk. That's even lower than the probable cause standard for obtaining a search warrant. In addition, the judge is forced to rush his decision and issue the confiscation order on the same day of the ex parte hearing. Within two weeks of the ex parte hearing, a hearing with the gun owner present must occur. The purpose is to put in place a long-term confiscation order. But even at that hearing, the standard of proof is far below the beyond a reasonable doubt standard used in criminal trials. Rather, it need only be shown by a, quote, preponderance of evidence, unquote, that the person poses a risk of injury to self or others. What kind of evidence? Things like the reckless storage of firearms or drinking habits can be considered. If you keep a handgun in the bedside table and drink a beer, you may be in trouble. Number four, shifting the burden of proof to the gun owner. The long-term confiscation order lasts up to a year, but it may be renewed indefinitely. Once it is in place, it becomes very difficult to remove. To have the confiscation order lifted, the gun owner must prove he does not pose a threat to himself or others. Proving a negative is nearly impossible. Adding insult to injury, the bill even authorizes local law enforcement to charge the gun owner a storage fee for confiscating and storing his guns. The implementation of red that's a close quote. The implementation of red flag laws at any level is unconscionable and totally unacceptable. And I'm here to warn you that there are millions of Americans who will never submit to such oppression. None of us wants to see acts of violence committed against law enforcement personnel in America. But when law enforcers begin carrying out these draconian red flag laws, they will begin lighting the matches of resistance in the hearts of freedom-loving people in this country like hasn't been seen in over 150 years. We have already heard about Gary Willis the Maryland man who was killed by police officers in his own home as they attempted to carry out a red flag order to seize his gun. This man had committed no crime. He had not been accused of committing a crime. He was given no hearing and no due process. Mr. Willis did not attempt to harm the officers. He merely resisted their efforts to disarm him and he was killed on the spot in his own home by police officers who had taken an oath to protect the liberties of this poor innocent man. I assure you, Mr. Willis will not be the last American to resist the attempted confiscation of his firearms. Do you legislators, judges, county sheriffs, chiefs of police, sheriff's deputies, city policemen not realize that red flag laws are tantamount to a declaration of war against the American people? Are you so removed from the laws of nature and nature's God that you cannot see this? Do you not realize that in spite of all of Great Britain's abuses of power, our, col our colonist forebears did not openly rebel against the crown until King George sent troops to Lexington and Concord to confiscate the colonists' firearms? You do understand that, right? And you do understand, do you not, that the blood of the colonists flows in the veins of we Americans? At what point do the American people come to believe that you truly do not wish to honor your oath to the Constitution or behave in a manner that truly honors America's Second Amendment and the heritage of liberty that we all share as Americans? At what point do we Americans lose all respect for our civil magistrates and peace officers? For many Americans, that point will come 
when policemen bang on their doors at 5 a.m. and attempt to seize their guns. Do you not realize that every single instance of an innocent person being subjected to a red flag gun confiscation order will only magnify and strengthen the resentment and animosity in the hearts of the community against these laws and against the ones who are creating and implementing them. Do you not understand that this is a powder keg that could explode into an all-out rebellion at any time? Do you want that? I don't want that. I don't want that for my wife and me, my children and grandchildren, my friends, or my community. Why would you legislators, judges, and policemen even think about doing such a thing? In the name of all that we hold dear, in the name of the brave men at Lexington Green and Concord Bridge, in the name of every American who's given his life in defense of the principles contained in the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, and our Bill of Rights, including many of our brave police officers and sheriff's deputies, and in the name of the natural laws of our Creator, please stop this madness before you literally tear our communities and our country apart. As a legislator, you must not pass any semblance of a red flag law. As a judge, you must not issue a gun confiscation warrant on the basis of a red flag law. As a sheriff or chief of police, you must not order your officers to confiscate a citizen's guns on the basis of a red flag warrant. And if you are a sheriff's deputy or city policeman, you must not obey an order to confiscate your fellow citizens' guns on the basis of a red flag law. I beg you to realize what you are doing. I beg you to refuse to participate in this madness. I beg you to join your fellow churchmen, clubmen, neighbors, friends, and townsmen and help us turn back this dastardly attempt to transform our constitutional republic into another repressive regime that, in the end, would require the people to tear it down. Again, I beg you to think about what you are doing, about the pain you are causing, about the lives you are ruining, and about the potential harm you are inflicting on our country. Red flag laws are on the wrong side of history, the wrong side of our Constitution, the wrong side of liberty, and on the wrong side of the laws of God.